Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel for another Hot Toys Spider-Man No Way Home 1-6 scale diorama display base unboxing and review. I'm sorry if I sound a little bit trepidatious, this is just something different and out there from Hot Toys. We don't often see standalone diorama display bases. We're taking a look at the lizard, not in figure format, in diorama display base format. Very interesting. Now I got mine from ToysWonderland.com, link for that is in the description below. They have pay in for and a loyalty program. While you're down there, why not hit that subscribe, bell notification icon and join button so you're notified as soon as a brand new Hot Toys review goes live on the channel. As for the box art, this thing is huge. I am very curious to see how big this lizard diorama display base is. Front and centre, the lizard, which is a little bit deceptive because we only get half of him, not his legs, which are pictured on the front of the box. We've got Doctor Strange's portal in the background, some Doc Ock tentacles, a pumpkin bomb, as well as Spider-Man No Way Home and Lizard. All of the foreground images, like the tentacles and the lizard, they're nice and glossy, whereas the background is textured. Around the back, you've got your warnings, your legal information, a glossy print for the bottom half, textured for the top and some electricity effects to represent Electro. On the side of the box, the rest of that image spilling over the edge from the front cover. Two more Doc Ock tentacles, another pumpkin bomb, the remainder of Doctor Strange's portal, Lizard's leg, which isn't included in the box, and a little bit more lightning, like I said, to represent Electro, who just so happens to be represented on the base as well. Got a translucent open window underneath the slipcover. On the side of the box, the multiverse with the little white symbols that are supposed to be the silhouettes of other villains from other universes. Doesn't quite work as well on this particular print. Then around the back, this image is sick. We've got the Spidey symbol and the cracked multiverse in the middle. I almost wish this was printed on the front cover rather than hidden away underneath the slipcover. Then on the other side, it's still the cracked multiverse, with his name over the top. You know, not that long ago, a third party company actually gave us a 1-6 scale lizard. And it wasn't just a diorama display base either, it was a fully articulated figure. With a wired tail, with swap out hands, and even a lab coat so you could recreate his look from Amazing Spider-Man 1. But not a lot of people got that lizard, they were holding out hope for this, the diorama display base. First in hand impressions for the official Hot Toys take on a 1-6 scale lizard. Hmm. It is striking, I'll give it that. I reckon we might be able to work with this. What we are going to do now is get the display base and everything it comes with laid out in the light box and take a closer look. Well, it turns out you can actually remove lizard from the display base. It's not displayable like this, of course not. That smooth plastic peg is just atrocious. The reason I did this is because I want to focus on this bottom portion first and then we'll pop Lizard on and look at the thing fully assembled as a whole. Starting off with this neat little included accessory for Andrew Garfield's Spidey, it's the cure for the Lizard. It's this metallic blue, what would have been a Midtown Science water bottle I think. Then up top you've got some wires, these brass and copper sections all made of plastic of course. And you do have to be careful, this feels relatively fragile. But including the cure for the lizard? Yeah, that was a nice touch Hot Toys. The bottom section alone of the display base is pretty substantial. Then when you pop the lizard on, and you factor in his outstretched arm and the additional height he adds, this display base gets pretty big pretty quickly. Normally we have width in the display, we have height to spare, it's normally quite underutilized. But depth? can be a challenge, just something to be aware of. The sculpt work is pretty soft all the way around, and that's because this is made of vinyl, yet it doesn't feel cheap. It still feels quite hefty and sturdy. Paint applications are really good, you've got this speckling of lighter grey on the surface. I think it makes up for the softer sculpt work. We also have washers in the crevices, some brighter orange on this panel and around the back, some kind of piece of metal I suppose, some claw marks from the lizard, this chunk of metal with some washers in those crevices, some sand, maybe to represent Sandman, and this eye beam with the green patina. I'm pretty sure that's a piece of the Statue of Liberty. Because don't forget, in No Way Home, they were restoring the Statue of Liberty, so all of that green, that was on its way out. We also have this piece of what would be metal sticking out of the rockwork. 
and a lot of lightning. The lightning I like the idea of, but in practice it is so fragile. That one's fallen off, this one has fallen off, and this piece, if I touch it the wrong way, it will fall off as well. Luckily they do just plug right back in, or if you find the glue is not strong enough you can pop your own in there, but still, a little bit frustrating having to deal with lightning constantly falling off. Now around the back, if you notice this section, this one is what Lizard plugs onto, yeah it's a separate rock that you do use to hide the hole that the flight pole screws into. That would work well if there wasn't this huge seam around the edge. It's not like you're fooling anyone hot toys, even when you plug this little rock in the top, you can still see that seam. So yeah, it's pretty ugly. Unfortunately, it doesn't work I think as well as they were expecting. It was a pretty admirable attempt by them to try and make it look seamless. They didn't need to though because it's around the back and it's completely covered by lizard anyway, so from the front you're never even going to see this portion of the display base. What do you do with this spare rock? I just pop mine in there and it looks pretty at home, it looks like just part of the rest of the rock work. The flight pole is bendable and huge, seriously this thing is massive and you have a spring-loaded waist clamp. Now you do have to be careful, even though the waist clamp is foam padded, we know how those waist clamps go, they do tend to dig into the rubbery superhero suits that you would use them with over time. So just be careful, maybe use that around his thigh perhaps, or add your own extra padding. What we are going to do now though is get the lizard on the display base and check out the entire thing assembled. Can I say the usual thing even though this is not a figure and it can't pose? Screw it, let's just say it anyway. Standing straight up and down in the light box, no crazy poses or accessories or anything like that. This thing looks a hell of a lot better assembled than it does separately. Lizard is just bursting up out of the ground, he's sculpted very nicely, we'll discuss him in a lot more detail. Paint applications on Lizard himself are nice and glossy, so that helps him stand out against the mat on the underside of the display base with all the rock work and the metal bits and pieces. Then the lightning, it adds a lot of visual interest. Is this going to stand out in the collection? Oh, yes I think it will. This is a super eye-catching display base. And it represents Lizard. If you are building out your No Way Home Rogues Gallery, you're probably going to want to get this guy. Up close and personal, kicking things off with Lizard's head sculpt. This is a wicked looking head sculpt. It also just happens to look a lot like Lizard. The eyes are all kinds of crazy, this light yellow with some darker green shading up on top. They're also nice and glossy looking so they stand out against the rest of the head sculpt. You can see his nose has two slits sculpted in. You also have some super janky teeth, not straight and perfect, and they've added some washers in the molars, so it looks like he's been chewing on something. The tongue is wet and glossy, and one of my favourite details, these sinewy bits along the side of his mouth. There is a lot of depth to the mouth, you can see all the way back there. He's got some ears sculpted in below his mouth, I guess that's part of his lizard DNA at this point. You also have very craggly reptilian skin, and some of the texture is very fine, like right here on his cheeks, that's super HD. Then down the rest of his body, there's a mix of different sizes of the scales. You've got bigger ones, you've got smaller ones, and what looks like flabby skin, that is so nasty looking. On one side, this is accurate, you've got five fingers. Whereas on the other, you only have four. Because he regrew one of his arms, the lizard DNA, it altered that arm and it only gave him that number of fingers. He also looks pretty wet and slimy and glossy all the way around. More flabby skin down here, seriously, I hate the look of that. But it also works so well for lizard. His nails are quite sharp and prickly, they're also darker than his skin tone. And you have darker shading and lighter spots and some brown washes and his belly is quite light. So overall, yeah, Lizard looks pretty good. He looks a lot better, I think, than the display base he's sitting on. Not to say that this bottom portion is bad, it's not. It looks pretty good, it's just that Lizard is the star of the show. Bursting out of the ground, he's super dynamic. And coupled with the display base, you do have multiple flat spots you can stand Spidey. If you want him down here, doable. If you want him standing up here, okay. Or if you plug in the flight pole, you can have him jumping over Lizard. Now, speaking of Lizard, there is one little annoying thing that you may have already spotted. Lizard himself is one solid piece. Hot Toys, 
Why are there seam lines? There's a seam line here. There's a seam line here. There's a seam line around his hands. Completely unnecessary and not even that well hidden. If this was to be one piece of vinyl, which it is, this is unforgivable. There should totally have been no seam lines visible. If you're going to do seam lines, you may as well do articulation hot toys because usually that's what these seams mean. In this instance, the head sculpt can't come off, you can't move it, and you can't move any of the other joints either. I don't think it's a deal breaker, but you might, so yeah, I thought it was worth mentioning. Front on, if you have him jumping towards you, his thumb obscures that seam line, the darker wash over the shoulder does the same, you can't even see the side of the head sculpt. But if you don't have enough depth to accommodate this outstretched arm and that one, this guy is seriously wide, then maybe you want to turn it to the side and then you'll see everything. You'll see the hand one, you'll see this one around the front and the side of the head sculpt. Also, I was hoping to be able to pop this in his mouth and have him chomping down on the cure just like in the film when he was cured. You can't, his mouth is just a little bit too wide open, so this is very, very loose in there. You can maybe pop some blue tack on the cure, then pop it in his mouth to lock it and keep it in position. For a quick side-by-side -side comparison, you do get to a point with a character like Lizard in No Way Home who doesn't have a ton of screen time, where you have to decide if a display base with half of him in a fixed pose is good enough to represent that character in your display. For me, I would always prefer a figure. Lizard, he was the main villain in Amazing Spider-Man 1. So I'm happy I got the third party figure. He's significantly bigger, he has switch out hands and a lab coat and a bunch of articulation, so he's much more versatile. Whereas the diorama display base, he takes up a hell of a lot of depth and it's only half a lizard. So depending on where you have this in your display, it might not make a ton of sense that he's popping out of the ground like that. Or it might, if you have it on the bottom shelf, then okay, it makes sense he's popping up out of there, Totally. If you have him on the top shelf, maybe not as much. Next to the Amazing Spider-Man figure, technically from Amazing Spider-Man 2, but also kind of sort of from No Way Home, Spidey, as you can see, is still taller than this display base, even at the highest point with Lizard's hand outstretched. Now you are supposed to have Spidey on top of Lizard, jumping over him or kicking his ass or something, and we'll do that a little bit later. But right now, alongside him, if you're displaying Lizard as his own character versus him as a display base, this is what that looks like. For a much closer up comparison, third party Lizard on the left and Hot Toys display base Lizard on the right, the Hot Toys head sculpt is smaller, the overall scale is smaller, and you're only getting half a lizard, versus the third party one, you're getting a full lizard. That might be enough immediately to tell you which lizard to go for. For me, I prefer the paint applications on Hot Toys Lizard and the texture and the detail. Whereas with the third party one, you're getting a full figure, like I said, so I prefer that. In an ideal world, Hot Toys would have made their own lizard. It would have been as articulated and as big as the third party one, but had as much detail as this display base does. Wrapping up on Hot Toys Lizard, the diorama display base version from Spider-Man No Way Home. This thing is good, but it's not perfect. It's got seam lines in places where it really shouldn't. It's quite deep, so I don't know if everyone's going to be able to accommodate this who wants it. And you only get half of Lizard. The other half is supposedly underneath, just sort of sitting down there as he's bursting out of the ground. That's interesting. I don't know how many people are really going to get this, nor how many people should, especially when there's a very solid third party fully articulated lizard on the market. That one's my preference. I don't have a ton of depth, but I do have a lot of height to work with, and that one is just so much more versatile. This one, the paint applications are better, the pose is super dynamic, and I would like to say he's seamless, but he isn't. Adding the lightning to the display base and a little sprinkle of sand in there, that does help with a cohesive look in the display. If you have the Sandman diorama display base and you have Electro hovering around, then yes, this will totally tie everything together. And you can maybe pose multiple Spideys on this thing. You can have one jumping over Lizard, one around the front, and one on their own display base, kicking Lizard in the face if you so choose. My favorite thing about this display base it's not actually the base at all. It's the lizard cure. That little accessory alone for me was worth the price of admission. 
but not everyone collects like me, I know, so the lizard display base itself is just okay. If you have the room for it, and you want lizard, and you don't like the third party figure because of the joints, get this one. If you don't care about any of that, and you want a proper figure, get the third party one. Pretty simple. Now I got mine from toyswonderland.com, link for that is in the description below, they have pay in four, and a loyalty program. While you're down there, why not hit that subscribe, bell notification icon, and join button, if you like the sound of seeing your name in the end credits of my reviews. Like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you in the next video.